This is a Chinese built railway in the heart of Kenya. Yep, you heard that right. The SGR from Nairobi to Mombasa was built by Chinese developers and paid for by Kenya mostly through Chinese loans to the tune of $3.6 billion. The idea was to create a cheaper and faster connection between the two cities through a railway that Kenya hoped would essentially pay for itself. Except so far, it hasn't. And the reason why is a great example of why China is revamping its ambitious Belt and Road project. See, back in 2008, Kenya launched its Vision 2030 Economic Revitalization Plan, part of which was a plan to build a new standard gauge railway, or SGR, from the port of Mombasa to the landlocked neighbouring countries of Uganda and Rwanda. Around the same time, China wanted to invest in foreign countries' infrastructure to create new markets for Chinese goods. Fast forward to around 2014, and China's state-owned China Road and Bridge Corporation won a contract from Kenya without any competitive bidding to build phase one of the project, a 300 mile stretch from Mombasa to Nairobi. Upon completion of the standard uh, gauge railway line, transport costs in the region are expected to reduce by more than 60%. China is ready to share her experiences. To pay China Road and Bridge Corporation, or CRBC, Kenya took out a $3.6 billion loan from China's Exim Bank. The idea was that revenue from the new SGR line would be used to pay back the loan. And to try and make sure it was profitable, Kenya's Port Authority made a commitment to guarantee that a certain amount of cargo would travel along the line. Remember this point, we'll be coming back to it later. Work started around 2014, Chinese concrete and steel was imported into Kenya, and then in 2017, 18 months ahead of schedule, and just in time for Kenya's elections, the railway was finished. But here's the thing, since it opened, Kenya's SGR has struggled to be profitable. By 2020, it had lost some $200 million. Not ideal for a railway that's supposed to be paying for itself. But here's the thing, since it opened, Kenya's SGR has struggled to be profitable. By 2020, it had lost some $200 million. Not ideal for a railway that's supposed to be paying for itself. So what happened? Well, I've been wading through these documents to try and find out. To start with, Kenya's government officials questioned whether the country received good value for money because CRBC was awarded the contract without any other competition. What's more, in 2013, when the World Bank published a study into building the standard gauge railway in Kenya, they found there was no economic or financial case to do so. See, for the new SGR to pay for itself, it has to move a lot of cargo. Some analysts estimate over 20 million tonnes a year, and the World Bank estimated between 20 and 55 million tonnes. And it just doesn't move that much. That's partly because phase one of the railway development ended at Nairobi and didn't connect up with Rwanda and Uganda. But it's also because alongside the railway line runs a road, and that's how a lot of cargo is moved. So to try and get cargo off the roads and onto the train and uphold its guarantees, Kenya's Port Authority ordered that cargo headed to Nairobi or further north had to be transported there via the SGR. It led to protests from Mombasa locals and truck drivers, and still, even with that order, the SGR didn't move enough cargo to be profitable. Fast forward to today, and President William Ruto has reversed the order, which means the SGR could soon be carrying even less cargo. That casts more doubt over whether the train will ever be economically sustainable and able to pay for itself. Kenya's Treasury and Port Authority and China's CRBC and Exim Bank didn't respond to my request for comment, and Kenya Railways referred me to their managing director, who didn't respond either. As of June 2021, Kenya still owed $3.3 billion of the initial $3.6 billion borrowed, and that's just part of Kenya's debt to China. And it's that, combined with other expensive and underutilised infrastructure projects that China...